Love is Blonde is one of those shows that I hate that I'm so invested in. Like, I was at work talking to my female co-workers like, girl, you see what Clay did? I be feeling so weird watching this show. Like I be having to do push-ups between episodes to remind myself who I am. Love is Blind is one of those shows that started off with a great concept because on one hand, the thought of falling in love with somebody without physically seeing them is beautiful, it's poetic. But then on the other hand, how can people be this stupid? I don't usually watch reality TV because I feel like most of it is fake, but for some reason, this show always has me hooked and this might be some of the dumbest television I've seen in a long time. Since last season, I don't care about these people outside of the TV show, but based on what I've seen on social media, it's pretty clear that a lot of people just go on this show to try to get some camera time. Like my guy Trevor, I thought he was cool. He seemed like a gentle giant, he a gym bro. But based on social media in real life, he had a girlfriend. Trevor wasn't the only one that had stuff going on, but let's talk about these couples. And real quick, that guy Matthew, he's definitely killed somebody before. Now let's start with the most boring couple of this season, but boring on this show is a good thing. Johnny and Amy. You remember the black couple last season, the one with the dude who always had the bad shoes? Couples like them and Johnny and Amy, you can look at them pretty early on, you just know they're gonna make it. Amy was one of my favorite people from this season. She's fine as hell and she seems like one of those genuine good types of people. Johnny was cool, but in a season full of such trash men, they made him look like the next coming of Jesus. They were so good together that their biggest storyline from this season was condoms. To me, the whole birth control thing was stupid. As a man, I can't force my woman to take birth control. I'm not a girl, so I don't know how it feels, but I do know that it affects your body. For me, as a man, if I don't wanna take male birth control, it's pretty clear what needs to be done. You go raw, do you pull out? No, condoms. It's not a single man on this planet that likes wearing condoms. If you're a woman and you wanna know what it's like for a man to wear a condom, I want you to think about the most delicious chocolate chip cookie you've ever seen in your life, and you wanna eat it. Put that thing in a Ziploc bag and try to bite it. That's how it feels. But for Johnny, it seemed like it was more than just a feeling. He was legit scared to have kids. Pull and pray. Kenneth and Brittany, they were, they were, uh, what are we talking about? Get off your phone, bro, damn. They were actually my favorite couple in the pod and I watched all these episodes kind of late. So when I tweeted out that they were my favorite, all I got was a bunch of responses of people posting memes. In the past, they were emotional, they were talking about God, they were talking about waiting until marriage to have sex, which is crazy to me, but shout out to y'all. I thought they were for sure gonna work out, but as soon as they got into the real world, I felt such secondhand embarrassment. I'm a proud introvert, I be chilling, I don't mind sitting in silence, but when you're with somebody that you love, and especially somebody that you're engaged to, those type of moments shouldn't happen. That was more than just being an introvert, those were awkward. This man just seemed like he was off in his own world. Like, how are you on the phone all the time? And she was basically throwing herself at this man. Like, she was saying she wanted more physical contact, she wanted more intimacy, and he was just like, a oh, word, nah. On social media, it was people saying that Kenneth was a little, you know. Allegedly on social media, they say he's had friends and family come out to say that he's gay, but I say, hey, that's none of my business. To my knowledge, he hasn't confirmed or denied, so I don't really care. But on Next Life TV, we love everybody. <laughs> but just what a complete waste of time. And if he is really gay, that's so unfair for Britney. That sucks for her because she got robbed of an experience. But this is just another example of people wanting to be on this show for some TV time. Laura and Jeremy, I'm saying this as a man, Laura 1000% should have stabbed that man in the neck. Unless I'm tripping, I feel like in the pods we didn't even really see that much of their story. It was kind of just like, oh, here's Jeremy and Laura. Everything about their relationship was weird to me. Like they both pissed me off very early on with this whole bean dip thing when they would talk about flicking 80s nipple or whatever. White people, okay? Like I said, I love everybody, but that's on white people stuff if I ever seen that. I could not imagine walking up to a black woman and flicking her in the nipple. The main thing with them was Sarah Ann and this whole love triangle, and this man, Jeremy, is an idiot. Laura knew this man was lying from the jump, and this dumbass was like, nah, baby, we was in a car, we was just parked, we was in an alleyway, and we was just talking. As a man, if I'm up at 5 a.m. and I'm talking to a woman and I'm not already at home, it's because I'm trying to do something. What is there to talk about at 5 a.m. that we can't talk about the next day when we both sober? I don't know if they did something. I think they both denied it, but what makes that whole situation even crazier is Jeremy did this the day before he was gonna introduce Laura to his mom. 
What? And then when they get to the cookout, Sarah Ann is getting grilled by AD. AD is lighting her ass up. And then Sarah Ann starts crying her eyes out. And then five minutes later, she's riding jet skis and laughing with Jeremy like nothing even happened. And this is why I say Laura 1000% should have stabbed that man in the neck. Jimmy and Megan Fox, I mean Chelsea. Now I did think it would be a terrible idea for them to get married, but I was worried because I thought they would be stupid enough to actually do it. Megan Fox jokes to the side. Chelsea clearly has a lot of work she needs to do on herself because she's clearly dealing with some sort of insecurities but I don't blame her with a woman that looks like Jessica lurking in the shadows cuz trust me we gonna talk about her in a second Chelsea definitely has her issues but Jimmy isn't perfect either this man was wildin when they were at that private party for the couples the first time he saw AD he wanted some dark chocolate. The way this man was acting wasn't just disrespectful to his fiance, but it was also disrespectful to Clay. And to me, alcohol and saying I'm drunk isn't a valid excuse. This man was wildin'. Even as a viewer, Chelsea does come off as a clingy type of girl, but I'm 100% on her side with the whole best friend thing. I feel like it would be stupid to be in a relationship and expect your partner not to have friends of the opposite sex. I would be more worried if they didn't have friends like that. But if you know your partner and their best friend has sex before, if you know they text and they talk all day, yeah, I'd be a little worried too. The thing that killed me about their relationship was the fact that they rented out a whole theme park and they were on roller coasters. They were playing all these games and having a blast just for this man to sit her down and be like, yo, I can't marry you. I'm so glad those two didn't get married, but on social media, it's been videos of the two of them out together. I don't know how old or how new those videos are, but speaking of social media, the only time I do research is when it's something important and something serious, and I did my research on Jessica. Jessica's profile just so happened to pop up on my Instagram algorithm, and God damn, she's fine. Based on Jessica's background, she got a ton of red flags about her, but she is so fine that I was like, damn. Maybe being a stepdaddy to a 10 year old might not be that bad. God really blessed that woman. Jessica, if you see this video, I would love for you to DM me so we could talk about business adventures on my yacht. I don't even want to be the stepfather. I'm trying to be the father that stepped up for you. Call me. And then we get to Clay and AD, and with me being a black man, I usually root for black people in everything. The relationship between Clay and AD got a lot of attention on social media, and this might piss some people off, but I feel like they both got what they deserved. First, let's start with Clay. I didn't believe this man from the jump. I don't know if it's cause I'm a guy, but usually I can tell when a guy is on some BS. I don't know what it was about him, but I just didn't believe him from the beginning. And I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm not gonna tell him to burn in hell. He could be a good guy. I don't know. I don't know him, but I knew he won't go marry that girl. How do you look your girl in the face and you tell her the thing I'm scared the most about with our relationship is that I'm gonna cheat on you. What? I'm not Mr. Emotional, I'm not Mr. Sensitive, and I already know people are gonna be like, oh, but childhood trauma, oh, but his father. To me, that ain't no excuse. People always say they wanna break generational curses. You can't say I'm gonna break a generational curse, and then when you don't, you blame the generation that came before you. Your dad cheating on your mom, no, your dad taking you to cheat on your mom, that has absolutely nothing to do with you. In my opinion, that should make you wanna cheat less. And it felt like he was always complimenting her physical traits, which don't get me wrong, cause AD was built like pow, pow. But it was very noticeable. He made it clear in the pod that he wanted to know what she physically looked like. And the first thing you say at the altar to your soon to be wife is okay body, you got that shit on. And then at the bachelor party, he was telling his friends about his relationship. And the very first thing he said was, the sex is good, the chemistry is good. That's not the first thing I'm gonna tell my bros about the woman that I'm about to marry. Even though this was all a complete waste of time, he did make the right decision by not getting married. And I'm sure this is gonna piss some people off, but I don't care, cause you'll get over it. But AD is 32 years old. On that first episode, she said, my friend said I shouldn't date ballers, I shouldn't date athletes, I shouldn't date players, I should date good guys, but I don't like good guys. If I see a guy with a red flag, I'm gonna paint my nails red. And I feel like she even called Clay a red flag and she still wanted to marry him. I believe in holding people accountable, especially if you're in your 30s. And even the whole good guy thing, to me, it's so unfortunate that today being a solid man or a quote unquote good guy is just automatically associated with being corny. Like it's just hard for me to feel bad for you, especially if you're 32 years old and you're looking right at the camera, you're smiling at the camera, and you're saying that I purposely ignore red flags. Sounds like you got what you deserve. But I've also seen videos online of the two of them out together, so I don't know. But thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe if you're new here. We talk about a bunch of different things on this channel. What were your thoughts on this season? I know we got the reunion coming up. I'm sure that's gonna be a mess. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to make a whole nother video about that. And also, am I wrong about AD? 
Sorry, I believe in holding people accountable for their actions. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Love you guys. Tell someone you love them. Until next time, see you in the next life.